first changes that have been made in the shop floor module are in the navigation areas. On the left hand side we have the older version of the shop floor and on the right hand side we have the newer version. Under the configuration tab previously we had info ln setup which had shop floor settings which had all the settings necessary to configure the shop floor module. Now the shop floor settings have been taken out of the info ln setup and are directly under configuration. If we look at the shop floor settings options in both systems, we'll see that there has been a terminology change. On the left hand side in the current version of the shop floor, we refer to resource groups throughout. In the new version, we've renamed resource groups to work areas. They're exactly the same, it's just the terminology has been cleared up. So where we previously had employee resource group access, that's now employee work area access. Uh, supervisor resource group access is supervisor work area access. And user resource group access is now user work area access. The actual forms themselves are no different to the way they were. They've just been renamed. So if we look at the resource group form, and we look at the work areas form, they're exactly the same. They still have the same users assigned to them and so on and so forth. So there's no change to the fundamental philosophy of the resource groups. Next, if we look at the dispatch list in the actual shop floor module, we can see that the layout has changed. This is the current version where we have a start button on the right hand side. In the new version, the start button has been replaced by an icon. Performs exactly the same activity, you Use the same method of starting a job and will ask you for machines or setup if appropriate. Next, we'll see there are some changes in the active task form. Again, this is the current version of the active tasks where we have a report button on the right hand side and we also have time elapsed. If we look at the new version, what we see there is the report button has been replaced by a, an icon and the elapsed time has been changed to show the start time of the job. Again the action performed when you click on the stop button is exactly the same as it has been previously. All we're changing is the fact that it is an icon there rather than a button. The major change that has been made in the shop floor is to allow for multiple jobs to be started and stopped at the same time. In order to incorporate this, we need to activate the feature called RS9295M, which allows for multi-job start and stop. Once we've activated that, if we go to the parameters, shop floor parameters, we will see a new shop floor parameter there, which is called support multi-selection. If we turn that on, then we can see the difference when we go into the shop floor module. What I now see is, as well as the icons on the right to start and stop individual jobs, I also have these select buttons on the left hand side which allow me to select multiple jobs and then click on the start button. Or I can select all the jobs, deselect the jobs and select whichever jobs I want. I'm going to hit the start button and this will result in both jobs being started. Again, on the active task form, I now see I can still stop individual jobs if I wish to, or I can select one job or multiple jobs, or deselect all jobs, select all jobs. If I select a single job, then I have an option to do a re report. So this allows me to report quantities. If, if I select multiple jobs, it allows me to hit stop, and this physically stops those two jobs. So these are the major changes that have been made as far as the July release of shop floor is concerned.